After many months of running away from her pursuers a very beautiful and poor mother decided to hide in an orphanage. There she was singing a lullaby to her newborn baby named Lu Xu until the owner of the orphanage came to kick her out. Then she looked at her baby for the last time and asked the lady to take care of him while she got some medicine. But after the lady agreed and saw a pendant from us, Lu Xu's mother disappeared like a smoking father. Since the day she disappeared, 18 years have passed and Lu Xu ended up becoming a bankrupt man who takes care of his younger sister Xiao Yu and even though he was poor, he continued to spend all all his money on festival schemes to make her happy. When they approached to see the main event, the flames almost burned Lu Xu's face, but in that instant time froze, the entire universe stood still and his knot pendant glowed golden. No one else noticed this, but Lu Xu realized that the man in front of him was not creating optical illusions and that all his powers were real and magical. When the show ended, Lu Xu wanted to know what the source was behind his flames, so he went backstage with his sister. As they watched some mysterious men talking, one of them shot a tranquilizer at the wizard and Xiao Yu screamed in fear. Now, their positions were compromised, but Lu Xu told everyone that they obviously didn't see them shooting a man in front of them, and if they had seen it, they would never report it to the police or anything like that. Fortunately, the idiots believe Lu Xu's lie, so Lu Xu immediately tried to escape, but their leader didn't feel comfortable letting Lu Xu leave like that. As they walked away, a man asked if they were interested in sharing videos on how to make a lot of money while being poor, but Lu Xu said he wasn't interested in selling courses and left. He was already broke after investing in the wrong things, and now he wondered how their world had become so horrible, to the point where a person was shot in front of them. So, to comfort him, Xiao Yu reminded him that they are not related by blood and that in the future he will have a beautiful girlfriend. As he prepared dinner, she told him that the only thing she wanted to eat was his soul. And after hearing this, Lu Xu decided to leave and buy her some ramen. As we cross the street in freezing weather, we see the coffer truck about to claim another victim. And this time, the chosen one was Lu Xu. And after being hit, his soul began to leave his body. But since this is a Chinese anime, Lu Xu ended up getting a hack system and the nut in his quintet started to float. When he ascended to heaven, the nut finally opened and released all of its energy to restart his heart. After resurrecting from death, he only thought about one thing, which in this case was that the truck driver should pay for having run over them. So he started telling the man to handle all his money, but some random numbers started to appear above him until the man decided to run away. Then, at the corner store, Lu Xu tried to buy his sister's ramen, but the store manager was shocked to see so much blood falling from his head. So, Lu Xu left and ended up running into a couple on the way home as soon as he arrived and went into the house to take a shower. However, he noticed that the wound on his head had completely healed and the strangest thing of all was that there was a golden scar on his hand. When he started investigating, he saw a lottery system that informed him about all the coins he had collected and he realized that he had received these coins at the exact moment he aroused negative emotions in other people. So, he decided to use up all his balance on a wheel of fortune because the Chinese love gambling games so he was in a hurry to lose all his money without getting any reward. The last spin finally gave him something and a scroll appeared before his eyes. It had the same lyrics as the lullaby his mother sang to him. Then he started to sing it. With the words of the song, the scroll disintegrated into a sphere of energy in front of him, and from the distant galaxies and a light was cast towards the earth, and Lu Xu began to absorb it all. When he opened his eyes, he was floating in front of a solar system, but after losing all his coins, he realized he could get rich and irritate his sister all night. Have you always wanted to draw your favorite anime characters but think you don't have the talent? Here on our channel we have the perfect solution for you. We've formed an exclusive partnership to teach you all how to draw anime quickly and easily, even if you think you don't have the talent for it. You will learn from Noah Williams, one of the greatest experts in the world of anime. Drawing anime has never been so simple, and it doesn't matter if you are a beginner or already have some experience. From the first class you will see the results, you will learn very quickly. The link will be in the video description, and only you can access and learn today. Then, while they were awake, watching sibling romance limbs, Lu Xu felt something strange happening, and when he went to the rooftop to investigate, he saw two suspicious men jumping on top of the rooftops. Before he was seen, the Lu Xu tried to cover his mouth, but the men had already noticed his presence. Presence. They asked what he was doing up there, so Lu Xu said that he didn't notice that they were jumping from one house to another and that they look very suspicious doing that. He revealed that he was up there just admiring the sky and the idiots actually believed him. They told him to go home before jumping away again. While waiting inside, Xiaoyu wondered who he was talking to but a man fell outside the window. So, Lu Xu forced his sister to stay inside while he went to check and her anger towards the situation caused him to earn many more coins but she sneaked out behind him and he told her to charm the ambulance because this man is in bad shape. However, However, Lu Xu didn't have the money to pay the ambulance fee, so he simply wanted to leave it outside. When he said this, his system awarded him coins, and it was at that moment that Lu Xu realized that the man was pretending to be unconscious, so he told his sister that they should leave this man's body outside anyway. And in case he is dead, he told his sister that they can use him as fertilizer or something. After saying this, he earned 470 coins, and Lu Xu was happy to be on his way to becoming the next demon lord. The man tried to beg for water, so the Lu Xu gave him a snowball, but the man threw it away and begged for water again.
again. However, Lu Xu began to push him down and tease him mercilessly just to earn more coins. He said he was just trying to help him rest but the man had had enough and grabbed his arm trying to burn him but his heart nullified the burn and began to dissipate the fire no matter how many times the guy tried or burn. He kept earning coins from all this stupid interaction. Then the man said he was just joking and wanted to leave. When he got up, Lu Xu told the man to avoid coming home because he would probably see his wife cheating on him. After saying that, he smiled and gained more points because of it. After that, inside his room, he decided to spend all his coins and buy the first item, which was a celestial fruit. After eating, before he knew it, a beam of light came towards him from the edge of the cosmos, and he was transported back to his solar system, where the celestial fruit became another planet with all the energy leaving its body. He returned to reality and saw the root of a tree forming in his hand. Quickly, he realized that he had become much stronger than before, and after going through all of this, he wanted to accumulate even more coins to see how far he could go. A while later, after seeing a fire on the news, he decided to create chaos in his school's group chat and instantly gained thousands of points. The next morning, in his store, some of his colleagues heard he saw it again, but pretended they didn't see it. This became his daily life, and he explained this to the man next to him, saying that most people were embarrassed to be friends with a broke guy like him. After saying these words, three rich kids approached Lu Xu and tried to make fun of him for being poor, but he already responded by saying that they smell more than his expired eggs, annoying all the daddy's boys. Their leader tried to call him ugly, but Lu Xu said his mother was ugly and poor. The guy didn't believe him when he was called poor, so he decided to buy all the eggs to appear rich. However, Lu Xu took advantage of this moment to farm coins, announcing to everyone in line that the idiot in front had bought all his eggs. Due to everyone's irritation, Lu Xu ended up earning several coins for his hack system. The rich kid at your school tried to show his VIP card as a source of payment. You know that Lu Xu doesn't accept cards as payment. However, at that very moment, all the egg money was piled on the table by a beautiful girl who attended the same school as them. Her name is Quincy, and after doing that, she left. And Lu Xu told the boys to clean their asses before leaving the house, because they smell like shit. In class, everyone saw the news about the awakening of a superhuman. When out of nowhere, a boy arrived saying that a murder was about to happen on the roof. Lu Xu's gossiper decided to get closer and take a closer look. However, his body out of nowhere felt a danger surrounding him, and as he ran up the stairs, he realized that the girl before him was returning on the roof. On the roof, the delinquent tried to eliminate the director. But Lu Xu, seeing all the ugly characters around him, realized that this was the perfect chance to earn even more coins. He took a step forward and began reciting the damn Chinese constitution, saying that dictatorship is only permitted by the leader of the nation. He also commented that children are allowed to work. To then say that this boy was committing a serious crime and talking about these things to a delinquent made him end up earning thousands of coins. After all, what he said wasn't solving anything, and as everyone was distracted by Lu Xu's clueless boy act, the police officers ran towards the delinquent and neutralized him. One of the girls approached him and said that she thought it was great that he saved the day, but he told her he's not interested in girls who look like men earning more points in the process, and that was exactly all he needed to earn all the coins he wanted from this event. But when he entered the room, he saw two suspicious scientists in the room who were about to force him to take a blood test. With no way to escape, Lu Xu was forced to take syringes from the men. Luckily they are Chinese so their toys are quite small. The average there is about 2 centimeters. When he returned home, he saw that stranger from before, but he completely ignored it, pretending that he had never seen it in his life. At home he saw that his sister had developed a fever due to the cold, so he decided to bet all his money on a celestial fruit to cure his sister. Instead of simply trying a common remedy, after 30 rounds, he was set to lose all his money from the hack system until he finally won one of the fruits. After getting 4 more fruits, he gave one to his sister and her fever instantly disappeared. So, we discovered that this anime was made to encourage people to spend money at betting houses. During the day, he decided to give ELO the rest of his fruits, saying that consuming them would allow her to awaken like him. However, at the same time he lost coins, he starts to accumulate them again, calling the poor girl useless for never having done her homework, and that if she continues like this, she will be a girl with no future just like him. The next morning, the teacher explains that only special students will take classes with a new instructor, and Lu Xu remembers seeing him before. The first to be called is the girl who helped Lu Xu. Student by student, the teacher called everyone until Lu Xu was the last to be called. Furthermore, a new transfer student named Jiang will be joining the class, so the girl sitting next to Lu Xu offered her seat to the boy, because she couldn't stand having to deal with Lu Xu's boiled egg smell every day. Before the night, Lu Xu went to attend the secret class, and he was wondering why this suspicious man was a new teacher, and the man revealed in front of all of them that their blood was tested with a special alloy, and the darker the blood mixture created, the higher the person's rank. Those with the highest ranks are capable of annihilating entire cities, and those with F rank are also approved, but they are very weak, and after revealing everyone's rank, he dismissed them. After class, everyone spoke badly about Lu Xu behind his back. I thought he would be stuck in S rank forever, but Lu Xu didn't mind the others at all, and actually decided to earn coins from it, sending text messages saying that everyone's mother is F rank. On the same night, Lu Xu consumed the last celestial
celestial fruit and saw that it could now be purchased from the item shop. He also saw that the Wheel of Fortune had unlocked a new item which this time was expired tofu. With the remaining coins he started rolling all night and after hours of spending his coins he finally hit the jackpot and unlocked a new scroll. But before he could read it the scroll's energy embedded itself in Xiaoyu's head and dark energy emanated from the heavens allowing her to also see the solar system. As he lay in bed he wondered if there was a connection between his two solar systems but saw that he needed to roll over 80 expired tofu in order to unlock a new item and he ended up sleeping wondering if he could turn his coins into money. So the next morning he decided to sell the expired tofu. When one of the people tried the tofu she thought it was delicious and because of that the whole town lined up to try some of the expired tofu. His life began to take a new turn allowing him to sell his smelly foods for more money and due to the huge queue with several people smelling expired tofu he managed to farm many more coins for his hack system. Before long he summoned the last of the celestial foods and his solar system was now finally complete. The same music he heard as a baby began to emanate around him and he consumed the star's energy exploding into a million different flames. At this moment a mysterious dagger appeared before his eyes and he realized that the giant star had been his soul all this time. So he tried to summon swords using his soul power. However when using it he completely exhausted all of his energy and he wondered how powerful he would become when he completed all seven solar systems. The next day Professor Lise presented the spiritual stone which in this case is a powerful item that unlocks hidden powers through meditation. In the event Lu Xu attempted to combine his power with his new sword but the sheer violence of his heavenly nap nearly overwhelmed him. As he left the house he noticed a strange old man practicing his swordsmanship and the old man tried to show off but Lu Xu had already completely disappeared. At school the class leader shows his strength in arm wrestling defeating everyone but when Lu Xu appears he tries to challenge him to a duel. However the Lu Xu is immobile more tactful and to completely destroy the class leader's hopes the Lu Xu told him that he could try to use both arms against him. However once again Lu Xu completely destroyed him and in the end he thanked him saying that because of the arm wrestling against him he ended up awakening his powers and becoming much stronger. During lunch Lu Xu couldn't get enough of annoying people to get more coins so he used his special toxic gas ability making everyone uncomfortable with the smell of expired tofu and earning a lot more coins. After that at home he felt something strange again and he told his sister to stay quiet at home while he investigated. It was at that moment that he saw a strange guy lowering his head and the old man in the house and the neighbor welcomed him as one of the leaders of the celestial network. Now, with the world at war, the mysterious leader asked the old man if he would like to become the last member of the celestial network, but the old man, who calls himself Lord, rejected his offer. After being rejected, the hare walked away, promising the Lord that he would bring him the medicine he had requested. While on his way he gave Lu Xu a glance and left. The next morning, Lu Xu became interested in the Lord swordsmanship but he still didn't start his training now and just threw his little sister over to the Lord to take care of her. At school, his chant of negative emotions kept rising and he began to wonder what the hell his sister was doing. After classes ended, that very beautiful girl who helped him once again looked at him and when he came back to the house he saw that the gentleman was actually helping his sister with her math homework but due to, to the education that Lu Xu gave her, she was treating the old man very badly and all the old man's negative emotions were selling coins to Lu Xu and he realized he could use his sister to accumulate even more coins since they were somehow connected. And now that the Lord has taken care of his sister for him, he really wants to teach Lu Xu how to use a sword. Before they started, Lu Xu begged the man to teach his sister every day, which ended up irritating them both a lot. When Shei Lu returned home, the master brought him weighted vests each weighing about 90 kilos, but Lu Xu threw them into the air as if they were a toy, thus revealing that he was one of the awakened superhumans. Upon seeing his absolute power, the old man decided to take a different approach and pointed a piece of paper at the wall. The birds flew away, and a magical work began to envelop the paper. The old man then looked at Lu Xu and said that they would teach that anything in the world can be cut and with precise movements he moved the paper downwards creating a fissure in the ground that cut the steel. That was his first lesson and he told him that mastering a single skill is better than being average at 10 different skills. Then the old man ordered him to cut the air using a sword. Lu Xu was determined to master his power and began to cut the air but his posture was terrible. Fortunately the master corrected him and as he progressed the old man was eager to see how Lu Xu's skills would develop. Hours passed and at the thousandth blow Lu Xu finally felt the wind swirl around him. During the night they had a nice hot drink together and the master asked Lu Xu what he believes makes a person stronger than others. In response Lu Xu told him that he thought a person was powerful if he didn't follow anyone else's rules but the master revealed to him that it takes character, experience and determination to be stronger. He asks Lu Xu if he would take on more responsibilities if it meant becoming stronger. However when he thought of these words Lu Xu revealed that the only person he behaved like was his little sister and said that he would never take on greater responsibility even if it meant that he would become stronger. He also said that he would never help anyone in this world again, especially since no one helped him when he was younger. For him to just try to survive in this world when his sister is enough, so he doesn't
doesn't dream of becoming a hero for now. To hear this, the master takes his huge tea and promises that he will continue teaching Lu Xu. The next morning, Lu Xu's sister was finally starting to learn her lessons, all because the master's wife brought her some Pringles. As he watched this, Lu Xu felt a mysterious presence appearing behind him. A man from the heavenly network appeared, and the master prepared him for the conversation. It was at that moment that Lu Xu realized that his sister might be in danger, so he rushed home immediately. When he arrived he saw the man, and pretended he had forgotten lunch at home. When T. Lu Xu left, the man was telling his master that the ruins were beginning to reappear, and that they would cause chaos throughout the nation, and he came to ask his master for help to fight them, but the master rejected him. Before leaving, the man told him that the last placement in the heavenly network was still open for him, and left. It was at that moment that Lu Xu returned to T, and the man told him that he was excited to see his progress. Then, he asked her to repeat the phrase he taught. However, she offended him, saying that he would die soon from food poisoning after drinking so much tea. Before he left, he handed Lu Xu two vials to test his ratings and left. At night Lu Xu was excited to see how much he had evolved with the celestial fruit and saw that his blood had become dark enough to classify him as level A, having the power to destroy an entire city. However, his bottle began to glow with the colors of galaxies and he wondered what this could mean. And while he was trying to bury his result outside, the master asked him what his rating was, but Lu Xu lied to him, saying that his rating was still F, a clear lie that made him earn more coins. During the nights that passed, he continued singing his song, completing more planets in the nebulae, until a blue hour began to envelop him. He tried something no one should do at home, and realized that the second solar system provided him with protection from injury. He wondered how his sister was doing, but within her solar system, black holes were the only thing that appeared, and the center of the nebula began to suck her in. When he entered her room, he saw that she was being consumed by the darkness of her celestial map, until she returned to reality. He said he had finally broken through the first layer. He asked what abilities she managed to unlock, so she focused her energy and summoned the body of an ant, revealing that the poor insect had died last night, but now he obeys her every command. He asked the girl if she could summon more little souls like that, so they went out, and outside she found a group of frozen ants, and tried to summon another one. But the instant the soul of the other ant was summoned, the first ant disintegrated, and they realized that its powers were imitated by a single summoning. He asked what else she could create, so she spawned a flying bird, saying that her summons do not consume any of her energy, and that after being summoned by her, her summons can remain alive forever. Lu Xu wondered if they could use her power to summon an awakened person, so to test something bigger, he took her to a barn, where they chose a poor pig to do some experiments, and after she summoned the soul of the pig, he punched the magic pig to see if it would react the same way as a normal pig, but soon realized that it would be better to use his magic sword than punch the pig. As soon as she left, the pig ran to save its life, but her sword went through the pig, annihilating it with a single blow, and Xiaoyu was irritated by this. She was in a hurry to make her brother her next summon, but he promised he would make her scrambled eggs for a week, however she wanted scrambled targets for two weeks. While feeding her scrambled targets, he felt a surge of energy coming from the bridge, so he got up to leave. Xiaoyu jumped on his back, saying she would go along. After jumping between the buildings, they saw three men fighting against the Lu Xu instructor, and among one of the bandits had awakened, the bandit launched hundreds of fireballs towards an instructor, but he managed to dodge them all with his hand, hand, until the ropes of the bridge caught fire, and while he was distracted, the man jumped towards him and used the force to almost crush him, but as he fled, one of them began manipulating the floor below him to throw him off balance. The reinforcements arrived in force, approaching and taking care of their allies, however none of them were able to scratch the leader, so the instructor activated his magic seal to blast them both on the spot, and using the snow to his advantage, the leader from the bandits hid inside the smoke. The instructor's two companions ran through the smoke, but as soon as they entered, a giant explosion happened. With all the smoke dissipating, the three bandits came out unharmed, so Lu Xu told Xiaoyu to go back, while he went to try to find out the identity of the bandits, as he is very gossipy. Now the National Guard had completely surrounded the bandits' location, and they began to infiltrate their hideout, but they had already escaped to a different alley. The two lackeys realized that they were about to be captured, and said that they would be executed, so they began to beg their leader to turn himself in, however their leader revealed that the heavenly network would never leave them alone. After they eliminated two of the his soldiers, he told his companions that he would create a distraction and try to escape, and with the soldiers approaching, the leader blew up the door to knock them out, but the others had already surrounded. It was at that moment that the leader of the bandits used his two companions as body shields, fleeing from all those who attacked him while running through the alleys. One of the soldiers used his red body fluids to create the enchantment and attack the leader of the bandits, the throwing against the wall, leaving the guy with nowhere to run. At that moment the soldiers noticed the bright aura of Lu Xu, the gossiper above them. So he tried to say that he was looking for his lost cat around here, but his instructor ordered his soldiers to catch him and started throwing several magic hands at him. However Lu Xu decided to act like a parkour god, advancing through on top of his enemies using swords and human bodies as a springboard. Obviously the bandit was also hunted, so he threw his companions as a distraction. But the general of the heavenly network used his swords to open a hole in his belly. Now the bandit could keep three iPhones 
in there. At the same time Lu Xu faced two girls at the same time and used his sheets against them in battle. He dodged all the attacks with ease and counterattacked, even throwing a girl against the wall. Lu Xu a true macho man, a great honor for all Chinese. When the second girl ran after him, he used the sword sheath to knock him to the other side and using his superior acrobatics, he did a somersault backwards to avoid the sword blows and delivered a deadly blow that left his last enemy unconscious. Below him the leader of the bandits was still fighting. He was able to dodge all the blows but the wielder of the double sword pinned him against the wall and almost immobilized him. However the man crushed the metal swords with his own hands and grabbed his head throwing dozens of punches at his throat and then dragging him against the wall. At that moment the instructor threw several of his talismans at the man but none of them left even a scratch on him. He then threw the unconscious soldier towards Lu Xu and punched the ground which created a fog that blinded the entire field. Battle The instructor tried to catch Lu Xu off guard but he jumped to avoid the blow. At that moment several debris began to come towards the director and this forced an instructor to use his talismans to light up the entire battlefield but a gas canister came towards him and as soon as he realized that the canister was heavy and full of gas the canister simply exploded in his face and he was thrown against the wall while burning alive. Fortunately this kind of damage does not affect and when the fog dissipated Lu Xu noticed that all the soldiers had been knocked down and that the bandit was the only one left standing. At that moment Lu Xu covered his body with all his energy and the bandit prepared to deal a punch but Lu Xu managed to hold him back with his fists something then the sword inside him started to burn so it came out and pierced the criminal who ordered the wrong person to be messed with. After doing so he returned home doing his legendary parkour moves. Arriving home he removed his cloak of appearance and invisibility and told his sister that he wanted to test her powers once again. When they left the house the man asked him what the hell they were going to do so late at night so the little girl said that her brother would take her to a five-star restaurant and that he would spend all his life savings to make her happy. Lu Xu asked the master if he wanted to participate but the old man said he didn't have the money for it and asked them to be careful at night. Very thoughtful of him. As they approached the place where the battles took place Xia Will summoned her bird to get a better view of the entire area. After making sure that there were no enemies nearby she and Lu Xu returned to the exact spot where the fight took place and obviously they noticed that all the bodies had already disappeared. However, as soon as Xia Will entered the place she noticed the energy of the men who died in that area and Lu Xu told her to use her soul. She then absorbed their energy but she still couldn't summon them. She didn't know if the reason was her or if it was the very souls of the men who had just died. So she asked her brother to wait at least a day. In the end Lu Xu was happy that they had managed to make some progress and he told his sister that now it was time to go home. But she told him that he hadn't taken her to a five-star restaurant yet and Lu Xu told her that he was just making an excuse for the old man. But the girl currently didn't care about that. She just wanted to spend every penny he has in his broke pocket. In a noodle shop the little girl started devouring everything with force and Lu Xu told her that he wished he could take her out to eat every day like this. He believes that if she had stayed in the orphanage she could have had a better life. But when she heard those words she started holding back her tears, asking him why he wanted to go send her back there. She started crying, saying she doesn't care if she doesn't have a coat or if she hasn't eaten. Us, for her the only thing that matters is being with him, because he is her family. At that moment he remembers when he ran away from the orphanage for the first time and how she held his hand, because she didn't want him to leave her. However he walked away, leaving her alone all this time. While she fought to continue living without roof, he started selling eggs to pay the rent and studying with the time he had left. Loneliness began to slowly eat away at him until he finally saw Xiao and O appear in front of him. At first he tried to send her back to the orphanage, but she clung to him and since then her smile became the light which helped him get through every difficult day. He took her back to his apartment and she was happy to finally be able to live next to him. Whenever his eggs weren't sold and he couldn't afford to buy food, he would take the spoiled harvests he found from the other sellers and take them home for his sister to eat. And even during the freezing winters, Xiao Yi O would try to do the best she could to take care of her brother. Even when he was too sick to go out, she would try to sell the eggs at his house because as long as she could continue living with him, no matter what hardship she had to deal with, as time passed they became each other's warm and survived all the winters together and remembering all the things they went through. Lu Xu revealed that he wanted to buy a house for them, all because he didn't want to worry about paying the rent constantly and living on the brink of starvation. So he promised his sister that one day he would buy the house at that moment she held his hand, asking if his days would get better. So he told her that they would definitely and assured him with even more strength, knowing that thanks to the Hake boy, his life is about to change completely. I also want the Hake boy, I need it. The next morning Lu Xu started selling his stinky tofu again, but he was starting to run out and people had gotten used to the bad smell, so he couldn't make any more coins. One of the people asked Lu Xu if he could buy some more tofu, but he said they were all sold out and all he had to do was say that and he won several coins from all of them. Then he realized that if he just told these hungry people that he was exhausted, he would be rich as hell, so he started luring them into thinking he had tofu, and then he crushed all their useless dreams, telling them that all his stock had run out. After that one night a man discovers all of his wife's life savings and takes everything before leaving. Meanwhile the clock struck midnight and Xiao Yu finally managed to achieve her goal.
control, she began to see Lu Xu's door and finally he showed the man she had summoned. Lu Xu asked if she was able to control the her powers and she revealed that she could do anything with him, even read his memories to find out the location of the money they stole. While trying to concentrate, she remembered the place where he and his companions hid the money and was very excited to go dig it up. However, Lu Xu told her that they would return the money to the police when they found it. But Xiao Yu she was very sad when she saw these words. She asked if they really should return this money. After all, if they had all this money, they could finally buy this house and she wouldn't have to worry about going back to the orphanage. After hearing this, Lu Xu knelt down, promising her that he would never abandon her and that they would even buy their own house ethically without having to use stolen money, saying that he called her ugly and then told her to go to sleep so she could stay beautiful. She walked away angrily and after that conversation, Lu Xu remembered how much the little girl wants to continue living with him. He saw a flyer he saw from the house saying that the place where they live is for sale for 250,000 Chinese coins. The next morning the fat person who stole his wife's life savings appeared in front of everyone at school and Lu Xu immediately realized that he was a high level awakened. The man went up to the podium and introduced himself as the school's new director. However Lu Xu felt that there was something wrong with him and during the night the new director introduced himself as Li plus a guy named Li and he told everyone that they had located a mysterious awakened who had actually destroyed an entire field of soldiers. So in order for the students to evolve quickly they began to provide all the students with spiritual stones every month and everything will be arranged according to each person's strength level. C level awakened ones received 1, B level awakened ones received 2, and A level awakened ones received 10. The class leader looked at Lu Xu but panicked when he saw Lu Xu smiling and sending a text message to He. In the message Lu Xu said that he had arrived early at school because his mother woke him up early wanting some milk. After they were dismissed, Lu Xu met with Triangle B and asked him if the people would buy the spiritual stones on the black market. The Diangle said that it is illegal to sell the stones but there are certainly some millionaires interested and they would be willing to buy each one of them for a lot of money. Lu Xu realized that he had found the gold and told the Diangle that he wanted to sell them for the best possible price so the Diangle called someone who might be interested and in just a few seconds a man ended up accepting the deal, even asking for Lu Xu's bank account number. Lu Xu was shocked by the ease with which the sale was made and gave his stones to his friend, saying that he trusted him as after so much time together they were already close friends. With the deal closed he no longer needed to contact him. Worry about all those days he spent working in the cold just to have something to eat at home. After buying her snacks at the convenience store, Lu Xu showed the girl the deed to the house, saying that this house would finally be theirs. In addition he gave her a new phone number and had even added himself to the contracts and from tomorrow this house will be theirs. The patio, floor, walls, dishes and even the ants will be theirs. They will own all of this. Upon hearing this the girl immediately hugged him, crying because they are finally going to be together and asked if he will continue to need to work every day. So he said he would continue selling so they could buy food. But damn Lu Xu just wanted to piss people off for their coins. In his room the celestial map appeared before him and the second animosa was finally completed. At the same time however a dark and ominous hour continued to revolve around his sister. While selling his food the Lu Xu mocked all the people saying who was thinking about increasing the price and he ended up gaining hundreds of points just because of their dissatisfaction. Out of nowhere Principal Liz approached and asked for some stinky tofu but quickly realized that Lu Xu's face was familiar. Lu Xu revealed that he was one of his students so Principal Lily said that he wanted to receive free tofu for everyone every day but the seller of his house shouts at the director to stop taking advantage of Lu Xu's poor ugly orphan because his mother no longer loved him which is why he abandoned her since he was born. He also said that everyone at school bullies him because he smells like eggs and stinky tofu. The man told him that Lu Xu works every day just to pay for food at home and that he studies all his time free. Upon hearing his sad story, the director cried and handed him Lu Xu without any fuss. As an apology, the man who helped him asked who that bastard was and Lu Xu told him that he was a new director of his school. After finally giving him all the paperwork to buy from their house, an unknown number called him, telling him that he should go to the ruin that just opened immediately. He texted his sister, saying that they had finally bought the house. Home. But he needed to make a trip which would last a few days. After that we see hundreds of military vehicles transporting them to the ruined place. It was at that moment that Lu Xu thought about collecting coins, so he started saying that they all smelled like an anime convention and so more coins started to accumulate. When they arrived, a boss served meals to all of them and the leader of the, the gang went to Lu Xu and said they were happy to finally see him eating something decent instead of eating that rubbish he picked up from the orphanage's trash can. Upon hearing this, Lu Xu just sighed and the Quincy appeared from behind and disappeared completely after the group leader tried to look back. While they were having lunch, an overweight man looked for a place to sit, so one of the soldiers gave him his place to calm him down. However, when he left Lu Xu approached him and told them to stay. But the fat man politely refused, so Lu Xu slapped him, causing him to fall unconscious on the floor. And Lu Xu did this because he hates fat people. After he did that Jang appeared and said he was surprised for him managing to put that fat man in his place and even offering some of his food as a reward. He said that as they were near ruins, their hack systems 
would level up very quickly so at night Lu Xu wondered how he could enter his celestial map without singing his line of song. Lu Xu soon realized that it would be fairer to use all his free time to earn more coins so while the class leader was meditating Lu Xu started breathing heavily on him and kept interrupting his meditation. Lu Xu started reciting the story of his life to distract his thoughts and continued laughing at the class leader's face. The points continued to rise throughout the night and in the morning he had 147,000 coins for being a simply annoying person. He wanted to know how his sister was doing but there was no cellular data to be used. At lunchtime the boss gave more food because he knocked over the person who was consuming an entire barrel and a soldier even decided to take his seat but Lu Xu rejected it because he wanted to sit right on the Diang's lap. The Diang asked how he planned to level up so Lu Xu revealed that he only needed to arm wrestle the class leader once. Having said that he spent another night bothering the group leader telling him various things about his life just to irritate the guy and after hearing Lu Xu's voice so much without stopping he ran to the edge of a cliff where he thought he could finally have peace and stay peacefully but Lu Xu appeared and the leader of the class realized that there was only one thing he could do to escape his suffering and that was to take away his own. The next day Lu Xu was meditating away from all the students he entered his celestial map to release the rest of his fruits and even unlocked a new planet entered as light revolved around him and formed a mantle darkness that encapsulated his body giving him a new power of invincibility. While everyone gathered for lunch the boys tried to let Lu Xu go ahead of them and the class leader appeared laughing while looking for Lu Xu. They love Lu Xu because he was still in the F ranking but Lu Xu asked if he wanted to fight one more time to see who was stronger. The class leader really wanted to fight but the instructor said that they can't fight so the only thing they can do is participate in an arm wrestling match that might be okay so the class leader reluctantly agreed inside the camp tent the two boys faced each other and everyone was betting that the leader of the group would win as soon as the round started lu shu smashed the class leader's arm against the table saying that the class leader's mother is much stronger than him and that she always puts a lot of pressure on him when they are in bed having said that lu shu started shouting saying that he had leveled up again thanks to the class leader who is a loser the instructor all motivated by the two's arm wrestling asked lu shu if he wanted to arm wrestle with him too so they started to face each other but Lu Xu defeated him instantly and said that it was all thanks to the class leader's mother because she always made him train like a floor every night. Just in this game of messing with the class leader's mother, Lu Xu made several coins and after they finished, Lu Xu noticed a mist rising from the ruin and Jiang revealed that the portal had finally opened and now that the only way for anyone to get out of that portal would be to get in the eye of formatting and if no one manages to do that, everyone will be stuck inside for the rest of their lives. However something strange happened, alarms started to sound and fog started to spread across the camp, consuming all the people who tried to escape. Before he knew it, Lu Xu was sucked in and fell head first. He could barely stand up. After having suffered a serious concussion, when he opened his eyes he saw that he was in the middle of a desert and an axe began to fly towards his head but he dodged it and a skeleton knight approached him to try to cut it. it. However, Lu Xu managed to grab his axe and knocked him down, breaking all his bones. After defeating the skeleton, Lu Xu decided to climb a giant rock to get a better view of his location and he also wondered where everyone had gone. However an arm started to come out of the ground so he jumped and started to run away and the other skeletons could grab him and after he managed to escape from them a group of four students came running towards him saying that he needed to run if he didn't want to lose his life he saw one of his classmates about to be devoured by the zombie so Lu Xu ran to cut off his head and started cutting down all the zombies that were in his way but while he was distracted a zombie jumped on him and he was almost biting his neck instead of helping him the other students were too scared to save him so Lu Xu fought to beat the zombie through force and then crushed the zombie's skull as he walked back to them they begged him to stay and protect them but but he told everyone that he would never help some shit who abandoned him and just because of their attitude of abandoning him he won't help anyone else he wants everyone to die with that said he dropped his axe and said they were on their own die or survive everything depends on them it was at that moment that a girl became upset because they hadn't helped him because if they had done that Lu Xu would now help them as a few more days passed Lu Xu knocked down a zombie and then used acrobatics to defeat five others that were in his path with the sword he obtained and when darkness approached he climbed to as high a place as he could to keep the high ground but along the way he saw the kind kindly officer who offered his chair to him and the man was unfortunately dead so he just kept running while the vultures devoured his corpse the day there was short-lived and the night came too quickly and as he walked a flare appeared so he jumped up to the sky to knock him down and quickly went to the one who used the flare inside a ravine he saw a man holding this flare but he knew that no student had received it furthermore his system revealed that the, the man's name was just numbers instead of letters so he jumped and wondered if this man was a spy it turns out that before the fog devoured everyone a group of spies had loaded their flares and the guy in in front of Lu Xu was one of them. However Lu Xu had angered every person in the school thus memorizing each person's face. Teacher and every student and he knew that this guy was definitely not one of them. So he was about to start his little ball in exchange for coins. As the night went on he kept gaining points just by staring at the guy. So the man ended up trying to introduce himself as Chang. However Lu Xu said he had never met such a
such an ugly person. So Chang tried to ask if he could see the sword he picked up. With that said the two began to slowly walk towards each other. However before he could pick it up, Lu Xu pulled it away and said that he would use it to penetrate Chang's mother later. It was at that moment that Chang said that his mother had found it last year and tried to run away. But Lu Xu apologized and promised to watch him to make sure he was safe, which angered him even more. Yes my friends, Lu Xu had found his new victim to cultivate his coins and he knew that there was no chance of him letting this man escape. They keep running after each other and Chang is shocked by the fact that Lu Xu managed to following him. Out of nowhere more zombies began to emerge from within the earth and surrounded them. And Chang saw this as an opportunity to escape Lu Xu but was shocked that Lu Xu was still behind him. So he told Lu Xu to hand over his sword to him so he could protect them. But as they ran for their lives, Lu Xu thought this was a perfect time to farm more coins. So when Chang turned to get his sword, Lu Xu grabbed it and pretended to be afraid of being left without a sword. When three zombies surrounded him, Lu Xu pushed Chang to the ground and started running. One of the zombies tried to bite Chang but he used a pocket knife to eliminate his enemies and started running for his life. And when Lu Xu started that he was finally away from him, he heard it coming around the corner, staring at him. Then Lu Xu started to pretend that he was out of breath. And it was then that Chang started approaching them, condemning his weapon. And Lu Xu told him to find a place where they could rest for the night. So Chang decided to put away the knife and they ran towards the Gejia Hill. After climbing together, Lu Xu wondered who this person was, but realized that it was the perfect chance to start earning even more coins or annoying guy. In front of Lu Xu started to pretend that he was sleeping in closed, all this to scare him while he tried to stealthily eliminate. Soon the day dawned, and Lu Xu managed to earn 30,000 coins with this guy, but he started to feel hungry, having not eaten much in the last few days, so he got up and said he would look for something to eat, and when Chang could no longer see him, Lu Xu started eating his smelly tofu, and decided to return the opposite way to the one he had entered, and when he saw Chang lying down looking for him, he decided to test the strength of the blood, and poor Chang, poor thing, screamed for his life, but his hunger was so great that he didn't even care about it, and he started asking why he could smell expired tofu, he wondered how it would be possible to find food here since they didn't even have time to prepare. Lu Xu to earn even more points, started mentioning all the delicious meats that exist such as bacon, lamb and steak, causing Chang to release all his anger in one blow. Lu Xu narrowly dodged and with snow around them, Chang tried to knock him down and once Lu Xu's acrobatics weren't enough to prevent him from getting kicked in the face as he was spinning Chang ran to destroy him but Lu Xu grabbed his arm and threw him to the ground. However Chang regained his balance and tried to strike Lu Xu but he managed to dodge all the attacks and headbutt Lu Xu before giving him juice. Chang realized he was no match for him so when the snow blinded Lu Xu he tried to rush to knock him down but Lu Xu's martial art skills allowed him to knock Lu Xu down. So much so, Chang grabbed his sword and knocked it down. Then Lu Xu ran forward but took a step to the side at the last second, completely out of the way, and invoked his mystical dagger to copy him, thus defeating the enemy. Fight. Now he was sad to have ended the life of a person who spent a whole day with him but unfortunately the world is a cruel place. This was not the life he wanted but if this is how it is going to be, he he promised to keep moving forward and wished he could see his sister soon. A few days later, Lu Xu came across an apple that had been half eaten and realized that he had finally found a fruit to replace his smelly tofu. He started to climb the tree and grabbed one of them, but the squirrel started to get angry, so he decided to eat the apple in front of the squirrel and steal all his apples. Then a bunch of squirrels start stoning him and a sumo wrestling squirrel even came out of his cave, taking a giant rock to take away from Lu Xu, so he decided that it would be a threat even to animals. When trying to escape, he realized that the fruit fully restored his thirst energy, so he continued occurring until the sun set and he reached a river. After drinking some water, he began to eat even more fruit and realized that the formation's eye must be in the middle of the ruin, but before he could go there, a wolf appeared behind him and a second wolf tried to lunge at him, but he cut him off and tried to run. As he turned the corner, however, he saw 30 wolves waiting to fight him. Lu Xu started running for his life, but at least he was gaining hundreds of points with every second that passed. When he returned to the forest, the squirrel threw rocks at him again, so he promised to steal all the fruit when he returned. When he was out Outside the forest, a wolf jumped and cut his arm, and when he tried to eat a celestial fruit, he noticed that his body paint kept appearing. As terrible as it seemed, he knew he would return to his sister alive, so he ran for hours until nightfall, but the wolves continued to chase him. Eventually his shoes started to wear out, so he used them to knock down two wolves and started running again. Fortunately the feeling of running without his shoes was even better, and his speed increased vastly, allowing him to run much faster than the wolves, but ahead he found some of his colleagues grouped together, so he decided to make a grand entrance in front of them. He saw saw that one of them was carrying his axe, and these same people asked him if he could help them. However, Lu Xu said that he would rather all ugly people die, especially since he had been left to die before. It was at this moment that he encountered an infinite coins glitch, which consisted of making fun of people who were desperate to survive. Then he asked them how long it had been since they had eaten, and the cave revealed that it had been three days, and that they were already starting to starve without food or water. She begged him to save her, but he called her a gold digger and started eating in front of them. The sound of the apple being bitten made one of them almost come to his senses 
pieces, and it was at that moment that the gold digger knelt down because she was so hungry, so he showed her his tasty apple, and she opened her mouth and closed her eyes. But Lu Xu did not want to share his apples. The guys realized that there were eight of them, and Lu Xu was just one. Then their leader tried to ask for food in a threatening manner, but the Lu Xu started reciting all different types of meat, causing these starving people to almost lose their consciousness, and the Lu Xu was actually shocked at the fact that for them to have lasted so long without even eating, he got up to get his axe, which scared them all. After taking the axe, he asked if he wanted the axe back, and when the man said yes, the Lu Xu told him that it was a shame, having said that he began to run away from them, leaving the ugly and hungry losers defenseless, but at least he left two apples for everyone. Another week passed inside the ruin, and Lu Xu wondered if his sister was still okay, but as he uttered those words, he heard the footsteps of a knight, and as he looked towards the location of the sound, he saw a skeleton knight turning around the corner. In an instant he tried to strike at his face, and the Lu Xu barely managed to keep his foot from slipping, but as he struggled to get it off, he heard two more horses running in the distance. Then he pulled out the spear and knocked down the skeleton. The rest of the skeletal soldiers arrived, but the Lu Xu began to climb the mountain so that they could not reach him. However, they started shooting arrows at him, but he managed to dodge all of their attacks until the skeletons gave up on him and started to move away. Without his spear, the skeletal soldier decided to just grab his sword and continued walking away. In the distance, a group of heavenly network soldiers had seen that skeleton cavalry and one of them suggested killing their leader. Then, a man looked on until he noticed that one of the skeletons was only holding a sword instead of a spear. It was at that moment that he came to the conclusion that the one holding the sword was the leader. So, the man decided to shoot and shoot the leader, but after successfully eliminating him, they realized that they had shot the wrong skeleton, and so the knights started shooting their arrows at them. They started to run away, and when they left the arena, one of them saw Lu Xu sneaking down the cliff. Before they could act, the Lu Xu jumped to steal the spear from one of the knights and climbed back up the cliff. They all started shooting arrows once again, but he dodged all the shots and left with his new spear. He hid in a tree and waited for the soldiers to come out before jumping, but he remembered that their weapons will be confiscated as soon as they leave the ruins. So, to ensure that all his hard work didn't go to waste, he decided to trade these weapons with the other students, but at that moment he fell into the knight's trap and they began to approach him. This was all part of their plan, but Lu Xu stood his ground and enhanced his spear with his mystical energy, launching it into the sky. After taking up the weapons, the spear cut down two of the knights and the Lu Xu lunged towards the leader to overthrow him and threw his axe at another enemy. He picked up a third spear and narrowly dodged the oncoming blow, but when the skeleton almost hit him, he dodged and laughed in the skeleton's face. One of them tried to fire an arrow, but the Lu Xu threw his spear as he spun around and grabbed the other. As that skeleton was eliminated, he threw his spear at the skeleton that was running towards him. The leader tried to cut him with his sword, but Lu Xu managed to defend himself and knocked down a skeleton that was riding a horse. Immediately, he slashed at the swordsman and jumped towards the last skeleton to smash it into the ground. After taking them all down, he managed to secure all of his weapons. Meanwhile, his little sister was shooting darts at his face. After all it's been a while since he's been in contact with her. Very angry, she ended up opening a box that her brother had told her not to open, but she ended up finding another box inside. After a while of opening boxes, he saw a bag of chips inside, but the note told her to wait until he got home so they could eat it together. So she smiled and put the package away, but felt sad because he wasn't responding to any of her messages. Meanwhile, Lu Xu was climbing another mountain to ambush more soldiers, but while no one appeared, he began to meditate and finally ate another heavenly fruit. The magic hour transported him back to his solar system, and he was able to unlock another planet while feeling the power of the fruit. The heavenly net prepared to ambush a group of nine skeleton soldiers, and just as they were about to make the surprise attack, a spear appeared from the sky to strike down their leader. After the body disappeared, two more were launched into the sky, and a third threw the skeleton against the wall. Lu Xu finally made his entrance, and the heavenly network decided to help him, but Lu Xu eliminated another soldier with his spear, and began running towards the others to eliminate them. With only two soldiers remaining, the Lu Xu drew his sword and began running towards one of them, and when one of them tried to ambush him from the rear, the Lu Xu ducked down and stabbed the soldier, eliminating him. Everyone started wondering how powerful he was, and a guy who literally had no eyes asked if he was Lu Xu, and his friend told him that he should open his eyes instead of asking that stupid question. And when everyone asked why he was attacking the skeletons with so much force, without even expecting to help them, Lu Xu waited saying that all the weapons were his. After a while, he managed to gather all the spears and swords, and protected all his weapons from other people. One of the leaders of this expedition asked why he is collecting so many weapons if he can't use them all. Then he revealed that the man was wrong, and started showing off his weapons, telling everyone that they could come and get his weapons at a very good price. For Lu Xu, all his years of selling eggs were just a trial period for this moment. He told everyone that defense is worth more than gold in this situation, so the man asked if he could buy a sword, but Lu Xu realized that no one had real money in there. So, he asked the man how much his jade necklace was worth. The man said it was worth a lot of money, and Lu Xu offered an exchange, but the man rejected the deal. A soldier stepped forward and decided to make a deal, and offered his 
rich people's watch in exchange for a sword. One of them offered a 27 karat gold chain while the other offered a very expensive watch as well. He saw how everyone was hurt and if he was a person full of money with a living he would help them. But because he was a poor, fucked up, miserable failure, Lu Xu decided to just cash in on them all. Everyone started lining up and before long Lu Xu was showered in gold. Two people decided to pool their funds and paid a good money for a sword but Lu Xu gave them an axe saying that this money was not enough for a sword. However he showed them that the axe was actually sharper than a sword so the man gladly accepted. When the Lu Xu finished negotiating the group finally entered the center of the ruins and the Lu Xu at that point was the happiest man in the world for being so rich. After walking for hours they decided to camp and spend the night and the Lu Xu noticed that everyone was hungry and were running out of water so for the first time in his life he decided not to be a threat. He handed the leader a bunch of apples so that everyone could cut them and eat a single little piece. As soon as everyone had eaten a small slice they realized that the entire their energy had been restored and all hunger and thirst had been satisfied. It was at this moment that they began to offer more things for a simple apple. He accepted the offer and realized he was about to become a millionaire. One of them tried to call Lu Xu evil for hoarding all the food and trying to sell it but he responded saying it was their fault for being so useless. Suddenly a gust of wind came out of the ravine and dozens of ghosts began to fly towards them. All the students prepared to attack but when the ghosts approached them Lu Xu felt his dagger trying to come out of his chest but he tried to hide it as this is not a good time to reveal his secret weapon. As soon as a ghost came close to Lu Xu he felt a terrifying presence coming from him seeing Lu Xu as some kind of demonic being. So he ran away and all the ghosts started to escape the area. That's how Lu Xu realized that his abilities are getting more and more powerful as he advances. Finally they arrived at the center of the ruin. One of the boys said to his friend here the queen herself had saved him from two skeletons and he fell in love with her. Lu Xu pretended that there wasn't and realized that this was the perfect chance to show how rich he had become. So he started selling his weapons and buying even more jewelry. All the people started offering him millions of dollars and when he finished selling most of them a man called him to meet with the leaders of the heavenly network. When he arrived he made a point of showing how rich he was because if he married someone who was a gold digger he would know right away. The leader of the celestial network introduced himself to him telling him to stop selling his spears since he knows how to use them. A thousand weapons are worth a thousand weapons in the hands of those who know how to use them than a simple weapon in the hands of a useless person. Lu Xu agreed so the leader approached the center of the ruin and began to activate his magic. From within himself he withdrew his sword and sent it into the ruin. After examining the hole the leader decided that they would dive into it. After that while he was resting Lu Xu's system showed that there were number named spies in this place but he had no idea who they could be. Out of nowhere a tree started to fall and it was Li who threw it in there. However a squirrel came out of it and started screaming at him. But when the squirrel saw Lu Xu's ugly face he tried to attack him. After everyone collected the fruit the poor squirrel was about to have a heart attack. But Lu Xu handed him an apple while he was crying and the squirrel was eternally grateful to him. Out of nowhere Django finally appeared and went to Lu Xu. But some people wanted to steal Lu Xu's weapons so their leader stepped forward and offered to pay a good amount for a spear when they left here. However Lu Xu told him that he would not fall for such a scam. And when he received coins from a person whose name was Numbers he realized that this person was a spy. So he told her to leave. While everyone slept at night the Lu Xu was happy that his sister was still angry with him. But he realized that now she completely despised him and he didn't even have a way to explain his situation to her. While he was sleeping all the spies woke up and started running towards the center of the ruin and jumped straight down. When the latter also tried to jump something stopped him from falling and Lu Xu told him that he would not tell on them if they shared the profits. With 99% going to Lu Xu and 1% to him the spy realized that he was screwed and accepted the deal. But as soon as Lu Xu left and he tried to jump Lu Xu grabbed him again and smiled with his ugly face. The spies realized that one of them was missing but decided to continue advancing anyway. The remaining spy tried to catch Lu Xu off guard and threw a talisman towards him but Lu Xu was already in a completely different place and he began to shouting to wake everyone up and said that there was a spy trying to steal the formation's eye and as soon as he realized the situation and what he was in he didn't even give the spy time to react. A mystical tiger appeared and the Li's hand grabbed his face crushing him against the ruin and seeing that there were many spies among them the Li told everyone that they should enter the ruins right now instead of resting during the night otherwise the spies might end up stealing their items. The students started to line up and the leader was finding Lu Xu very strange with all those jewels but later Li realized that he might be a smart man so he asked Lu Xu if he would like to make a deal. He revealed that hundreds of ruins began to be opened but as Lu Xu was just a student he couldn't enter without his permission so for the price of a single gold chain the Li would call him to all the ruins but the Lu Xu called him self-serving and left. When everyone was ready to enter a woman went to the center and activated a magic spell which began to create stairs along the edge of the hole. As they descended hundreds of ghosts began to run from the center and the Lu Xu tried to keep his knife far away from them. When they reached the bottom of the well the Li saw that the bodies of the spies were rigid so he realized that their spirits must have left their bodies. This being a great way to avoid the ghosts 
that surround them. After walking for hours, they finally reach the entrance to the core of the ruins, but as soon as they entered, a gate closed behind them. From above crystals began to shine, and hundreds of ghosts appeared. Then the Lee summoned all his magical power to blow them up with a single shot. However, there were still many ghosts above, so the soldiers started trying to take them down together. And when one ghost tried to attack the Lu Shu, the creature was too scared to get closer, and he he wondered why the creatures were so afraid of him. He began to attack all the ghosts and absorb their bodies with his sword. However, one of the spying ghosts he gave me a long-time friend of the law, so he shouted releases his tiger powers to eliminate them all, and while Lu Xu wondered where the others had gone, his dark knife began to glow, and he struck down the ghost before it could reach him. It was at this moment that some people started to ask how he knew where the ghost would attack him, but he said it was just a coincidence and pure luck, so he showed his luck, sending the Li to attack a random place, and the Li's attack Li ended up hitting a ghost, shocking everyone. Li asked him to indicate another place, but after a while Li's blows stopped hitting the ghosts, and so everyone really believed that Lu Xu is just a full-blown boy lucky. From the central gate an army of zombies appeared, and the Li told them that he would take care of their leader, so he ran towards them and their powers began to clash against each other. The Li had an attack that made all of the ground shook beneath them, and eliminated their horse before landing. The rest of the soldiers drew their weapons and rushed forward to fight the zombies. But while everyone was fighting, the Lu Xu began to throw the soldier, obtaining a triple kill with a single spear. However one of them almost shot at his cost, but coincidence came to save him from death, and he used his agility to dodge of all the attacks, while cutting them all down, he thought she looked amazing and started rushing to eliminate another zombie. However the zombie began to run away for his life, and he realized that his knife was scaring them all. Their army was advancing slowly, and while Lu Xu thought about helping his allies not die, he realized that he was in a giant castle, so he decided to sneak inside and look for something to sell. In the middle of the entrance his knife began to radiate light, and a mysterious hour watched. When he entered a certain room, a ghost was preparing to ambush him, but Lu Xu dodged and used his sharp sword to penetrate the body of the ghost, eliminating him quickly. After that he wondered how many spies were still left. At the same time as this was happening Li was fighting for his life. The skeleton was giving everything to try to defeat Li, but Li dodged his blows and advanced even further towards him. However the skeleton was also good at dodging, but Li continued to pursue him with his martial arts tactics. They kept pushing each other back and forth, in that peak, in that cute style, and the skeleton called it an annoying fly, and they kept measuring their strength, going from one side to the other. At the same time Lu Xu finally approached the door of the central room of the castle and opened it. As he entered he saw something moving, but as soon as he walked away, the eyes of the two statues eliminated each other and began to advance towards him. Immediately his dagger flew out, stopping the advance of the guards, who retreated back to their positions. As he put away his spears, he realized that this was the perfect opportunity to earn more money, so he looked at the guard's face and tried to pull out his weapon. The poor royal guard was getting irritated, but ended up handing over the weapon, and Lu Xu continued earning coins from them. He began to go to each guard and take away their weapons, meanwhile the soldiers were still fighting for their lives, and Lu Xu tried to grab his enemy's spear so that they could escape from this cursed place, but the knight did not want to let go of his spear, which made Lu Xu believe that that spear really was the eye of the formation. Because of this, they began to give their all, using their energy to the maximum. None of the soldiers were able to advance, and the situation was so bad that Lu Xu was almost eliminated, but coincidence drew his sword and eliminated five skeletons in one interval. Of half a second, very close to the law, the leader of the skeletons concentrated his energy on three dragons, who started running towards there, and the guy barely dodged, and ended up being caught by an explosion, which instead of actually eliminating trapped him even more, and to make everything worse, a dragon was coming to bite him in the back and eliminate him, and when everyone thought he was really going to die, the Lee cast his last spell to free himself, and ran towards the knight, grabbing his spear and kicking him, coincidence continued to eliminate the rest of the skeletons, and then climbed to a high place and look for where Lu Xu was, but he had completely disappeared, as Lu Xu went deeper into the room, the leader skeleton felt the presence of someone in the room he was supposed to be guarding, so he let go of his spear and started running towards Lu Xu. It was at that moment that the Li realized that the skeleton's eye formation was another thing, and he began to run after the knight. When the leader of the skeletons returned, he saw that none of his guards had their spears, and now the Li had already caught up with him. However, the skeleton ordered the knights to end Li's life, and began running towards Lu Xu's location. At that exact moment Lu Xu was picking up a strange item, until out of nowhere he noticed a skeleton soldier behind him. The enemy started running towards him, and Lu Xu accidentally dropped a mysterious item from the box. While the item was still in the air, Lu Xu managed to catch the object. At that moment the colors began to disappear from the world, including the enemies and the people trapped inside. The world began to collapse, and the entire ground began to break. With humans being swallowed, gravity no longer existed, and everyone's energy was being sucked into Lu Xu's item. Suddenly the spears formed a circle around him before being swallowed, and as the ground beneath his legs disappeared, the squirrel tried to cling to him before disappearing. After that everyone finally returned to their world. Then we see the Jang starting to run looking for Lu Xu. At the same time coincidence started running looking for some trace of him. While the 
Li was sneaking out of the camp a while later we see all the soldiers handing over their items until the Jiang came running and shouting saying that he couldn't find Lu Xu and then an instructor said emotionally that Lu Xu did a great job sacrificing himself to save the others. When the instructor said this some people were happy saying that he deserved to die after tricking them but the class leader was sad and told an instructor that they could at least look for his body however Lu Xu appeared in the blink of an eye and went to the leader of the group saying that he only stayed alive so he could continue mining his mother's body during the night. He handed his remaining weapons to an instructor and the weight of them broke the table. As he walked home, his imam's negative emotions began to increase and he saw a bag of chips and saw that she was waiting for him at the door. Tree, he tried to extend his arms for a hug but she jumped and crushed his face with her feet. She started to investigate his body and when she finished she was happy to see that he wasn't scratched and hugged him crying. He apologized for making her wait so long but she started running home so he started following her. When they returned to the street he said that he had become rich. He showed her the expensive watches he had gotten but she didn't care about money anymore because the only thing he cared about was him. He promised that he would take him to a nice restaurant tomorrow so he could make her happy. So they promised each other that they would never be separated. On the way home, the old 6C of the sword was happy to see that he had come back sane and salt and he told them to rest before they continued practicing and Lu Xu thanked him for taking care of his imam while he was gone. When they were alone inside the house, Lu Xu asked her to summon the body of that guy that she can summon and after she did that, he summoned two magical pearls from his body. She asked him what those stones were and he explained that one is made of the ghosts he absorbed and the other is made of the humans who turned into ghosts. He wanted to know what would happen without her invocation starting so Lu Xu stuck one of those balls in the ghost's mouth and immediately the strength of the energy body increased a lot and Xiao Yui asked him when he would stop intimidating her invocations. He told her he had one last gift and took two apples from inside. When she ate the apples she obviously found them delicious and it was at that moment that the damn squirrel appeared again and started cursing her for eating the little apple from him. However Xiao Yui grabbed him and said he was the cutest thing she had ever seen and started playing with his face. Lu Xu told her to give the little creature a name so she decided to call him. Called him Chubby but Lu Xu told her that that wasn't a Chinese anime name so she decided to call the squirrel Li Xiao and gave him a potato chip. After the squirrel ate her, the girl had a brilliant idea and placed him in front of a bag of chips and told him that she would only feed him if he obeyed and Lu Xu was shocked by the effectiveness of his manipulation. When everything was resolved he looked at the ruin and tried to transport his consciousness into it. Before his eyes he was floating on top of the entire city but there was still something wrong so when he brought his consciousness back he decided to enter the bottom of the formation's eye and saw that all his weapons that were consumed are inside. Before his eyes a giant door stood in his way and when he tried to open it the door barely moved so all he could do was take a look inside and he saw the castle he was in stuck there before with everyone. However Xiao Yu started trying to wake him up and when he tried to explain what he was doing he hugged him saying he was afraid he was going to leave her again. He said he wouldn't leave her for long and promised to take her for dinner and also promised to buy a cool TV with all the gold chains he collected. Now the winter snow was finally starting to melt and the fireworks were lighting up the sky. The main thing of all was that the Lu Xu was happy to be sharing this moment with Xiao Yu because she was the only thing that mattered in his entire world. The second season begins with Aaron Yeager from the Celestial Network facing several men at the same time but this battle is just a child's play for him and one by one he eliminates his enemies without spilling a single drop of sweat. Meanwhile Lu Xu was living his normal life selling his spoiled tofu which is also a spoiled tofu. Out of nowhere a man overweight appears at admiring the horrible smell of tofu and Lu Xu tells the man that his tofu is just like the first love. It doesn't seem like it's going to work but in the end it ends up being something incredible. That man has never experienced love before and so he decides to ask for three spoiled tofu but Lu Xu says that there is only one portion left and farms some points with the man's despair. The man asks for this one tofu but Lu Xu says that this one is not for sale which makes the man even more desperate who begs him to sell this tofu to him. The fat man in the hope of experiencing the first love says he will pay as much as Lu Xu wants. Poor man, he barely knew that Lu Xu just wanted to make fun of him to farm even more points. During the night, Lu Xu goes to the school for a meeting of the parents of those who are students of the special cultivation class. He advances using his turn, and while some people commented on a student named Lu Xu having eliminated more than 10 zombies alone, Lu Xu himself enters the scene, saying that Lu Xu killed more than 50 powerful zombies at once alone. The discomfort of the man who seemed to have the whole situation under control was evident, and he extended his hand to Lu Xu, asking which student he was a parent from. But Lu Xu didn't answer anything, and when the instructor appears he asks why Lu Xu came alone to the meeting and asks where his parents are. Lu Xu just smiles making everyone laugh at him and after that he takes the instructor to the corner and informs him that he is an orphan. So he himself came to the meeting and the instructor accepts this and asks Lu Xu and everyone to sit in their places. And then the instructor comments on the incident where all of the students went through great difficulties and some even died. He says he doesn't intend to run away from responsibility but says that parents should be aware of the danger their children run when participating in special classes. After he says that an old man gets up 
up saying that he can accept that children face a danger like that again and some people agree with the old man. In response, the instructor says that everyone is free to give up. However those who give up will have their power sealed and will never be able to use them again. Lu Xu then raises his hand and asks what will happen to those who decide to stay and the instructor reveals that those who remain will be sent to train with the celestial network and will also receive a great salary. Lu Xu finds this very interesting because in addition to the profit from selling the fuck tofu, it will be very good to have another fixed income. Everyone asks for some time to think about it, but Lu Xu gets up and says that he will not give up like these parents who do not support their children. The instructor then says that those who stay will be able in the future to be those who will save the country, and then the parents start one by one to allow their children to stay in advance to the celestial network. After the meeting, already at home, Lu Xu looks for a student registration for his sister. He leaves this subject for later and decides to bet on his hack system. He has many points that he accumulated causing chaos in the city, but it doesn't matter how many points he spends, he can only get plates of food. Tired, he lies down on the bed and tries his luck with his feet, this time getting an unknown fruit which he puts inside without even knowing what it is for. The fruit makes him absorb a lot of energy around him and feels comfortable, as if he were wrapped in clouds. However, when he wakes up, he realizes that nothing has changed in his body, and he keeps wondering what the hell this fruit is for. So to find out, he decides to try to get more fruits like this. After that, he decides to go out a little, and when he passes by his sister, he keeps bullying her with a squirrel. He also asks what she would like to eat, and she ends up saying exactly the name of the plates of food he had received in his beds. He leaves home and meets Mr. Lear, who thought that Lu Xu would take too long to go back to training with him, because normally after exploring Mammoth Smoor, people take two days off. Lu Xu then tells Mr. Lear that he survived thanks to training with him, and takes off his coat to train more, revealing his full body body that was so hot. Master Lear asks if he will join the Celestial Network, and after Lu Xu confirms, the old man asks his reasons, and Lu Xu says he doesn't know yet. The old man says that the Celestial Network protects the peace of humanity, and Lu Xu says that this is too big a goal for him, and says that he just wants to live in peace with his sister. Then the old man stops the meaningless conversation, and begins to teach Lu Xu a technique that he must cultivate, until he can open the door to an ice mountain that will form a legendary sword for him. Seeing the old man using this technique, he realizes that that fruit from before increases his level in cultivating the stability of the frozen mountain. Lu Xu asks the old man how he invokes the power of the frozen mountain, and the old man says it will be very difficult, but he gives a tip to Lu Xu, telling him to imagine the mountain, and swing his sword while saying to the path to open. Lu Xu does exactly that and manages to cut a leaf falling in the distance. However, the old man seeing this went inside his house and started screaming, giving thousands of negative points to Lu Xu, which leaves Lu Xu wondering if the old man has Alzheimer's or something like that. The next day, Lu Xu welcomes his best classmate in his house, Jian. Upon entering Lu Xu's house, Jian realizes that his house is quite clean, and that everyone who despises him for selling stinky tofu is wrong, because his house doesn't stink. Jian comments on his house being far and quiet, and Lu Xu says he likes simplicity and tranquility, and then Jian asks why Lu Xu makes a point of being mean to everyone, asking what he will do if one day he needs help, and in response Lu Xu says he can survive on his own. However, Jian says that now that Lu Xu is going to join the Celestial Network, he will need to get along with the others. In response, Lu Xu says that in fact he needs Jian's help. His friend asks what he needs, and Lu Xu reveals that he needs three drops of his blood, and Jian accepts without even asking why his blood would be used, because he already imagines that Lu Xu does not intend to tell, and Lu Xu himself confirms this. Jian then extends his hand to Lu Xu, and the blood collection is carried out. After that, when they were leaving the house, the old man and his wife saw them, and the old woman praised Lu Xu's girlfriend, saying that she is a beautiful girl, but in response Lu Xu said that she is a man, which made the old man almost have a heart attack. Returning home, Lu Xu runs into his sister, who has just woken up. He says he has good news for her, and reveals that from now on she will be able to attend school. She says that this is bad news and gets very angry, but Lu Xu reveals that now they have money to get their document. Because of that she must live a normal life and attend school like any normal person. To convince him, he promises to make the meals she asks for, and she accepts, as long as he gives the food in his mouth. In response, Lu Xu, with an evil smile on her face, begins to summon the dishes she wants in her hand, and this irritates Jian a lot, and she shouts at him, asking why he didn't say he awakened the ability of Supreme Chief. He gets very upset about this, and Lu Xu asks her to eat soon. However, she hears her squirrel playing with the street rats, and runs to fight with him, saying that he is a beautiful and cute squirrel, and that he should not mix with dirty rats. After that, he takes his sister to the director, who hands Xiaoyu the envelope with the blood of Jian inside, which must ensure that his sister is placed in a special class, just like him. After that, he returns home and goes back to training, and the only, when he found out that he put little Xiaoyu in the gym, was a little upset, saying that he himself intended to teach her things. Lu Xu quickly says that even if she attends the school, she will continue to depend on his help. At this moment, Lu Xu pretends to be afraid that she will not be admitted, but the old asks him to stop lying. He reveals that he knows of the extraordinary potential of Lu Xu and his sister, and according to his deduction of the old man, he discovered that Lu Xu intends to hide the potential of his sister with a false blood test. He came to this conclusion because even
even though he has been a neighbor of Lushu for years, he has never seen a friend at home. So the old man brings scary news to Lushu, saying that the celestial network has a blood bank, and that he will be discovered if he does not change that blood tube urgent. Thinking about it, he prepared a classified blood tube in rank B, and wished him good luck in making the exchanges. Lushu then woke up his sister, and after she got up, she went to ask if he had food for breakfast, but when she saw that her brother woke her up at 4 a.m., she got angry and threw her cell phone at him. He then said he needed her power to solve a little problem. They go to a dark hole where Xiaoyu invokes the spirit of her human Pokemon, which is laughing non-stop after Lushu forced her to eat that pill from the previous season. He tells his sister to force him to break into the principal's room and exchange the blood samples. She puts the spirit into action, and Lushu uses a rare item to accompany him from heaven. Getting close to the academy, they realize that she is very well watched during the night, but this was not a problem for Xiaoyu. She perfectly controlled the spirit and went through guards, security cameras, and other things without being noticed. She then entered the principal's room and changed the blood tube that was on the table. But at the time of the escape, a guard saw the spirit, and when he prepared to report everything, he was knocked out with great delicacy, but he managed to alert everyone before fainting. The little girl retreats the spirit to the principal's room and hides it behind the table. The guards come after him, and she tries to use her strength to escape, but the guards begin to shoot the spirit from all sides. And finally, someone managed to cross the spirit's body with a powerful bullet. Fortunately, Xiaoyu did not suffer anything, and the spirit under her control remains intact. Even if it has been broken in the chest, she manages to make the spirit escape. And the next day, several men from the Celestial Kingdom investigate the principal's room to try to find out what the invader wanted. The principal asks them to check the fingerprints on the blood bottles, saying that it costs nothing to take a look. After that, Lu Xu went to Old Lee and asked for his help to exchange the bottles, saying that he could not do it, and Uncle Lee promises to help him, due to his sincerity in admitting his strength and his sisters. On returning home, Uncle Lee asks his wife how the school invasion was, and she reports about the strange creature that was shot but did not die. The old man believes that it was not those two brothers who tried to invade the school because they had no wounds on their bodies. However, he still believes that Lu Xu is hiding some of his power. While the old man was thinking about it, the principal and his companions from the Celestial Kingdom were watching the invader's recordings, and the principal gets very angry to see that the invader didn't stop laughing. Soon after, the result of the fingerprints on the blood bottles arrives. The principal's legend on them. The next day, at a restaurant on the street Lu Xu and Xiaoyu were having lunch, talking about the girl and going to school. Xiaoyu was not very excited about it, and said that if it weren't for the old man, they could have gotten sick with that whole situation of the blood bottle. Lu Xu, worried about his sister, looks at the squirrel and thinks of something evil. After that, he begins to tempt the hungry heart of the squirrel with an apple. He asks the squirrel if his friendship with the neighbor's rats is something reliable. Soon after, he asks the squirrel if he can train the rats to spy on the neighborhood, and the squirrel says they are very stupid. But Lu Xu doesn't understand anything, and Xiaoyu translates it to him. Lu Xu then gives a fruit of the crop to the squirrel, and after eating it, the animal feels much stronger. The brothers clap for him, but the squirrel, feeling powerful, tries to attack them. However, he is still very weak compared to them, which makes him cry while Xiaoyu squeezes his cheeks. Lu Xu thinks fast and squeezes an apple in a bucket of water, with the goal of sharing this juice with the street rats to see if they get a little smarter. The squirrel, seeing this, begins to complain, saying that he should not waste this fruit like this, but Lu Xu does not understand what he says, and Xiaoyu translates it. Then Lu Xu calms the squirrel, saying that he has more fruits like this. Looking out, Lu Xu sees the rats drooling, and fearing a new plague to begin with, he asks the squirrel to control them to avoid it, and the squirrel doesn't seem to have problems with that. Each of the rats is fed by the squirrel, and they really become smarter after drinking the fruit juice from the crop, which allows Lu Xu to ensure that several animals will be watching the area around them. After the army of rats is created, Lu Xu feels uncomfortable for not being able to understand what the squirrel says, just like his sister, who has already awakened the ability to communicate with animals. So he holds the squirrel, and says he will teach him to read and write. He puts the squirrel in front of a tablet, and orders him to do the exercises and a certain nap on his tablet every day from now on. Some time later, when it was already late at night, Lu Xu was still awake, packing his sister's backpack. His sister then went crazy asking him to go to bed soon, and seeing that her sister was also worrying about him. Lu Xu laughed and remembered all the difficult moments they went through together. The next day, Xiaoyu finally goes to school, but before anything else, she complains about her backpack. But Lu Xu cares about what's most important, and tells his sister to hide her power and not hit people. However, he says she can be at ease to bully everyone. Some time later, Xiaoyu enters the classroom with the biggest face of disgust. The boys are happy that the school has finally received a pretty girl, and when it's time to introduce herself, Xiaoyu just says her name, causing a slight discomfort in everyone. Meanwhile, Lu Xu was seeing the negative emotions that his sister caused and was happy with his new coin farm. In addition to Lu Xu, almost no one in the special class has run away from their duty, and while Lu Xu greeted Jian, the instructor shook his hand and said that thanks to his deeds and the ruins, he will be promoted to lieutenant. Upon hearing this, Lu Xu thinks about the higher salary he will receive now, until out of nowhere the instructor hugs him and tells Lu Xu that from now on they will be colleagues and asks Lu Xu to guide him whenever necessary because now they are equal.
equal. Lu Xu is shocked by this because no one had ever treated him so well. The instructor continues to squeeze the hands of all the students until the director comes to speak. Lu Xu first forgets his speech but soon finds it in his underwear and so he finally begins to give his true welcome to everyone inside the great celestial kingdom, a place where the strongest in the country are gathered. However, even if they are the strongest there have already been cases of rookies dying and some veterans have also lost their lives. He says that their path will be full of death and that their duty is to advance no matter what happens. He then makes everyone swear with their arms raised that they will be members of the celestial kingdom and that they will not be afraid of death and everyone does that. The director says that his belongings as members of the celestial kingdom will be delivered soon and before releasing everyone he asks them to remember the vote they made that day. When the director leaves we see that several students are crying with fear of dying. Lu Xu also felt a little uncomfortable with the oath until suddenly he realizes the negative emotions that his sister is creating. A teacher then calls for Lu Xu asking him to tell his sister that on her first day of class she is already attacking her classmates. On the other side of the screen Xiao was being severely reprimanded until Lu Xu arrived saying that he is her father. They then began to complain endlessly and he asked to see what she did and then it is shown on the security cameras that several girls were on top of her until suddenly they were all thrown away and one had her face wounded and lost several teeth. Lu Xu does his best to apologize and say that he will pay for the victim's medical treatment and Xiao watches everything from the outside feeling very unhappy with this situation. When they were leaving Xiao tried to hold Lu Xu's hand but she had no courage and retreated and when she had the courage to do that Lu Xu didn't let her hold his hand and accelerated her step. He was giving a real silence treatment to the girl and then she started crying asking him not to send her back to the orphanage. She knows she was wrong and apologizes for doing that but he only goes up to the roof of their house and asks Xiao to go up too. He asks his sister if she knows where she went wrong and she says that her mistake was to let the squirrel hit the girl. He says that in this world people must be strong and says that she is a very strong cave however this force must be used wisely knowing the right time to act. Lu Xu acts like a real father revealing to the cave that with the strength they have they are able to kill a person with a simple punch but she can't go that way and when she punches someone she must at least not break the bones and teeth. He approaches and tells his sister that not only her but he also got involved with problematic things and when his sister asks what happened to him for acting so seriously he asks her if they should use their powers to fight for the good of others and Xiao gives him a completely new vision for his life revealing that if one day she sees the old Li and his wife in danger she will do everything she can to save them not only him but other people too and Lu Xu says he's talking about people they don't know saying he felt comfortable when they shouted saying to him to sacrifice his life for the good of unknown people he never cared for anything but after making that oath he felt a bit of the weight of responsibility even so deep down he feels that he must protect people and Xiao laughs at him and asks if he wants to be a hero and Lu Xu also laughs and says that they are just two shits who were lucky and that being a hero is something too great for them but he actually preferred to live just a comfortable life next to her. She agrees and then she says she found the way he defended her at school very beautiful and he says of course he would use his adult mode to solve that issue. However, if the teachers believe they can intimidate them because of that, they are quite wrong because either he nor she will give up their dreams. Lu Xu also says that only he can regret it and Xiao then asks what she should do if someone tries to hit her and he says she should hit the person and she then asks what she should do if someone tries to kill her. Lu Xu then gets up and with a serious look he says she should kill the person. She laughs and asks what they will do if the whole world wants their death and then Lu Xu points his finger out and says that they will have to kill the whole world. After that we see an old man training a boy but the boy is so bad that the old man estimates that it will take about 20 years for him to release some power. The boy starts crying and the old man comforts him by telling him not to give up. The boy is doing the same training as Lu Xu swinging his sword and screaming to open. The boy gives more than 20,000 blows and yet nothing happens and then we find out that that failed boy is the old manly who today is strong and respected by everyone and this same old man continues to be scared by Lu Xu's ability because what it took him two years to do Lu Xu conquered in just a week. On the outside Lu Xu was screaming at night and when the old man went to talk to him Lu Xu revealed that he felt his power growing little by little and that's why he was so excited. The old man is envious of Lu Xu's ability and while he practiced Lu Xu felt a great desire to go to the bathroom because according to the old man when doing this training he must accumulate clouds to become rain and this is also an analogy for feeling like going to the bathroom. In the bathroom he starts singing to relax but Xiao Yu hears him through the door and asks if he is sick. He cleans himself and leaves the bathroom, lying to the girl saying that he was just singing while looking at a travel site. This cheers up the girl a lot and they spend the whole night planning a vacation trip which will be made by bus because Lu Xu sometimes acts as if he were poor. The next day, the old man teaches another technique for Lu Xu to train and while he practiced his mind was in the sky, surrounded by dense clouds and controlling these clouds with the movement of his sword was something quite complicated so the old man comments to him that mastering the clouds can be frustrating and that there are people who don't sleep for days trying to control them. In response, Lu Xu says it's fun and he gets excited when he starts mastering a new technique. The old man is shocked by this because at the time he almost gave up several times. The old man then closes his eyes to see the clouds
clouds that Lu Xu was mastering, and so he sees that this girl is on a completely different level, and then Lu Xu makes a movement that emits a sound that travels throughout the city, and that was what his former master called the sound of martial arts, but his own master didn't know what kind of sound it was, because he had never seen anyone reach such a level. Lu Xu looks at the old man and notices the discomfort increasing more and more. After all, Lu Xu is a genius. He then asks the old man what's behind the clouds he's trying to cut, and the old man tells him the same thing his master said a long time ago, that behind the clouds there is a great ocean. After that, Lu Xu warns the old man that he's going to travel with Xiao, and the old man says that traveling is great because it increases the depth of his life. The next day, Lu Xu leaves with his sister, and at the terminal he is uncomfortable because his sister forced him to buy a giant pink suitcase. Everyone looks at his suitcase, and Lu Xu is afraid of being mistaken for an effeminate man. He passes his suitcase through the check, and a guard asks him if there is a living animal inside it. Lu Xu grabs the squirrel, and says it's a plushie, but the squirrel fails in its disguise looking at a snack that someone was eating. After that, Lu Xu, very angry, says he will intensify the training of the squirrel, and then makes the squirrel leave alone, telling him to meet them later. The squirrel completes his mission perfectly, and gets a snack from Xiao. Their train arrives, and they go to their places, which are actually beds, however several people were occupying their place, so Lu Xu started poking the boy while saying that his mother's fat was asking him to eat her. The boy gets angry and stands up against Lu Xu. However the bad boy holds on, and says that he is a member of the special class, and that's why he shouldn't intimidate ordinary people. Lu Xu laughs and comments on the special class, leading the boy to ask if he is also a member. However, Lu Xu says he is a mechanic. Everyone laughs and asks what he fixes, and Lu Xu says he fixes the face of ugly people like them, based on the beating. The boy thought of attacking Lu Xu, but the bad boy held on, as the inspection of the wagons was coming, so Lu Xu finally lies in his bed with his sister. After that, at night, he trains a little, however he ends up breaking a train window, but he doesn't run away and decides to pay for what he destroyed. Soon after, in the morning, he wakes up Xiao Yu, promising to get her a legendary dish of food, and puts her to brush her teeth before the line to use the bathroom gets too big. After brushing her teeth, she asks for food, and Lu Xu starts preparing a legendary instant noodles, and out of nowhere, the stomach ache due to his training comes with force. So he walks slowly, taking the noodles to Xiao Yu, and she zooms him, as lately he has exploded the vase every night. When Xiao Yu starts eating, Lu Xu notices those people from before talking about spiritual stones. Lu Xu opens his mouth and says they are very poor idiots, and the boy from before gets out of his bed asking who he thinks he is, and he reveals his position as a tenant of the celestial network, even proving it. Everyone is shocked, and Lu Xu tells them not to be ashamed by trying to buy a celestial stone with the little money they have. Lu Xu shows him a real stone, and says it costs about 120,000 Chinese coins, which makes everyone think that Lu Xu is a rich man. After that, Lu Xu leaves the station, and reveals to Xiao Yu his plan, which is to find this black market of stones and farm a lot of money. But his sister doesn't care about that, and asks what they're going to eat, and Lu Xu says that if he is successful in his plan, she will be able to have a whole restaurant just for her. They start investigating that train group, and even follow them. Lu Xu launches a car with an energy emanating from him, and then he starts knocking on the window several times, asking different questions, but as the man didn't attack him after bothering him so much, he comes to the conclusion that the man inside the vehicle is from the Celestial Network. Lu Xu, to teach Xiao Yu his legendary investigation methods, asks her to do the same as he did with the driver of that vehicle, but the driver put on a roll, saying he doesn't know what time it is, and that he doesn't have a cell phone, or even a watch, so Xiao Yu removed the plate, and called him only to say what time it is for him. The man, even getting angry, thanks the girl, and by observing her energy, he comes to the conclusion that little Xiao Yu is just an ordinary civilian. Before going to the black market, Lu Xu asks his sister to protect herself at all costs, and in case of danger, she must come to him. Lu Xu then goes alone to the black market, and discovers that this is actually a fraud market. He observes the novices trying to find out if something is true, so that they can buy it, and Lu Xu thinks it's all nonsense. He decides to leave, but on the way a bald man tries to sell some items, and he refuses, asking if the old man is the king of pirates, because he only sells piracy. The old man then asks if he is an advanced level farmer, and Lu Xu says that he only cultivates single mothers, so the old man whispers to Lu Xu that he has cultivating stones for sale. But first he asks Lu Xu to prove his power, and Lu Xu proves it by exploding an item forged by the old man. Inside, a very strong boy delivers the spiritual pills, and the old man tries to make Lu Xu pay dearly for them, saying that he does not sell stones, but a chance of evolution in his life. Lu Xu, like another good seller, seriously asks the old man what the price is, and the old man says an absurd value, which shocks Lu Xu, because he could very well sell his stones for that value. So he tells the old man that this value is very low, and the old man increases the value to satisfy him, and then Lu Xu asks the old man to buy his stone for that value, and in the end, he manages to sell his stone to the old man for a value ten times more than he had previously sold. The old man asks Lu Xu if it's okay for him to sell his future like this, and Lu Xu shows his infinite stock of stones. When Lu Xu leaves, the old man asks his grandson, who in this case was the strong boy who delivered the stones, if he could also explode an item, like the boy before, and he reveals that even being the strongest in his class, he is not able to do that, so that boy 
boy from before must be on a completely different level. Lu Xu still walking in the black market finds a man with a very striking energy, he irritates him and then evaluates the situation, realizing that this man must be someone with good items. He asks him to show him his special items. However, the man says that he only trades for spiritual stones. Lu Xu says that spiritual stones are not needed for him, and the shocked man invites him to follow him. They go to a well, and there the man shows a powerful pumpkin, or pig, whatever you want to call it, but in the anime they call it a pumpkin, so I'll call it a pumpkin. The man says that this is a spiritual heritage passed on. The man has the power to absorb the user's spiritual energy, and Lu Xu finds it useless, but the man tries to show that the pumpkin really works. Lu Xu asks for the borrowed pumpkin in the forehead, and it really works, but he pretends that it didn't work, because he has a lot of energy, and decides to leave. The man wanting to get a good spiritual stone offers a discount, saying that he will exchange the item for four stones. Lu Xu reflects a little and thinks about the uses that this item may have. So he really decides to trade, and the man takes the stones and runs away, saying that he does not accept returns. On the way to leave, those novice figurants see Lu Xu, but he tells them all that if they tell someone they saw him here, he will devour everyone's back. Some time later, Lu Xu returns to his sister, who was very angry that he had used one of her shirts as a disguise, but he calms down, promising to take her to eat a delicious meat. Out of nowhere, those figurants pass by, and as Lu Xu knows the name of the most annoying among them, he decides to test if this tool is capable of capturing a human being. He says the name of the figurant, and his tool just draws his attention, and then he tests it again, but it only makes him feel a terrible pain with the touch. Lu Xu still doesn't understand how this tool works, and starts to believe it's a shitty item, so the seller ran away after the exchange. The next day, he goes to the meat restaurant with his younger sister. He annoys the cook a lot, so he can put a plate full of food for his sister, and after finishing eating, Lu Xu kept bullying the squirrel, as he hadn't learned to read and write yet. After that, he gives another fruit of the crop to the squirrel, and after eating, he evolves even more, gaining a majikana. When it's time to get on the bus for their tourist tour, the previous seller gets on the same bus, and Lu Xu realizes that he is holding a compass that is pointing forward. Out of nowhere, the novice figurant also gets on the bus, and is uncomfortable with the presence of Lu Xu. During the tour, they heard several stories about a princess and her mirror, and at the tour, Lu Xu and his sister enjoy the moment a little, until out of nowhere Lu Xu feels a known energy, and he notices that man who was blowing fire in the first episode riding a motorcycle. He realizes that the man was not caught by the celestial network, and is stronger than before. This man goes to the relic cellar, and Lu Xu watches everything closely. Inside the remote hut, the two agree to infiltrate the next ruin and get their items to sell in the black market. The blonde asks if this compass is reliable, and the seller says yes, saying that it is a treasure from his family. Lu Xu understands perfectly that they want to dig up treasures in front of him, and reflects to himself that he is not charitable to let them collect valuable items in front of him. So in order to deal with them without letting any of them escape, he uses a magic to hide his identity. He takes the fire user's motorcycle and runs away with it on his back. He runs until dusk with the motorcycle on his back, running over a bus, carrying the motorcycle and scaring the driver and his co-pilot. Meanwhile, the owner of the motorcycle was running with everything he could after him, and at a certain point he calls the seller and asks him to meet him on the way to the mountain. The fat seller quickly comes to him and informs him that the man stole his motorcycle and is running with it on his lap. The owner of the motorcycle does not know anyone who could do this, so he asks the seller if he has angered anyone recently, and the seller denies having done so. So without much information, they decide to go to Monte Rio and not lose the things there. But they lose confidence when they remember that they would have to go there quickly, because the motorcycle they were going to use, it was stolen. Meanwhile, in the Celestial Network, they were receiving messages from people talking about a man carrying a motorcycle on his back. They look at their cameras and see Luxo passing by. And no matter how many humans can give Luxo, they are going too fast, and his disguise also makes it impossible for them to discover his identity. So they decide to set up a circus to stop him. However, Luxo does not show up in the siege they made in the city. So he comes to the conclusion that he is still on the road. Luxo leaves the motorcycle on top of a mountain and remembers the compass of the seller, Lydia, which allows him to find a burst of energy. Luxo then concentrates and manages to find that energy. He then finds a place with very soft sand and then he takes one of those spears that he obtained outside the sun. Finding something very interesting, he breaks the entrance of the place and enters the place that initially seems to be an excavation mine. The place was full of traps, but Luxo escapes easily and even says that not even a 230-year-old Chinese woman would fall into these useless traps. As he advances through the dungeon, he finds an altar with half a mirror. He puts his energy into this thing and almost has his eyes blinded. He calls the item a flash bomb and suddenly he notices some negative emotions, which means that his pursuers have arrived. They were fighting near the dungeon, taking up a good photo for having passed on the information of the dungeon with legendary items. However, they decide to stop fighting and find the dungeon quickly before it is too late. However, since their enemy is inside, the leader Han asks his business partner to burn the entire dungeon. But before he does that, Luxo communicates with them, saying that he will give them the mirror and in exchange they will let him leave alive. They agree to this. He throws the mirror, the man suspected is the real item. So Luxo tells them to test it, putting their energy into it. They do so and end up blind, just like Luxo. So our 
hero picks up the mirror and even though he is attacked, the firepower of a blind enemy is nothing to him. The ground then runs away, carrying death on its back again, leaving the two men with no choice but to chase him on foot halfway. The men of the Celestial Network appear asking about a man holding a motorcycle and they pretend not to have seen anything and the men of the Celestial Network leave. However, they soon stop the vehicle and ask what are they doing in this remote region. Walking on foot? When he asks the question, the blonde man starts to run, giving the salesman no choice but to run too. However, the salesman is captured by the man of the Celestial Network and when he is abandoned by his companion, he decides to report it saying that he is a rank D flame user wanted by the Celestial Network. Angry at being handed over, the flame user tried to kill the Leviathan but it defended itself with a special blanket. The members of the Celestial Network recognize the fire user and said that he always ends up burning everything and they say that he even killed three members of the Celestial Network by burning them. Angry, the man who was driving the car decided to appeal, revealing that he is a B rank expert flame user. Instead of dying, he ends up giving himself up and after capturing them, the member of the Celestial Network asks about the man carrying the motorcycle and they explain everything. However, the man of the Celestial Network does not believe them and asks about the special item that was inside the dungeon and they say that it was half of the princess's spirit which had the power to emit a light with the strength of the sun. However, they lost the item to the motorcycle thief and did not even see its appearance as they were blinded. Luxo was returning running as fast as he could and he finally returns to his sister who was waiting for him almost asleep outside the tent. He tells his sister that he defeated the villains and gives her the princess's mirror. Then Xiao asked him if he took this mirror to give to her and he said no, which made his sister angry. When she returned to her tent several cars passed by carrying the two villains. Lux noticed a large gathering of foreigners gathering right next to him and realized that a ruin was really about to open and that he was thinking about communicating this to the celestial network but he had no idea how to explain how he knew this information. Arriving there, Lux met his friend Jen and he revealed that all students who had great merit in the special class could enter the ruins and Lux was one of them, which meant that the celestial network already knew everything and Jen told him that the celestial network had even set up its military base. The next day, everyone's trip had to end because of the historical ruin that had already opened and while everyone was asking for a refund of the travel money, Lux was telling his sister that they should pack their things and leave to explore the ruins. This time, he really intended to take his sister with him. They have some trouble getting into the military facility because of Xiao, but Jian helps them by presenting his wealthy person ID, which opens the doors for Xiao Yu to enter safely with them while he's there.